Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are making cheeseburger soup, which I have made before, but this time I'm gonna do it in the slow cooker. So I'm kind of following a recipe that I found online, which I will have linked below, but I'm also gonna kind of just do what I normally do. I think I'm gonna kind of combine it. So um, let's get started. I've already had a little rough start. I've got my beef pretty much cooked, um, but somehow in the process, I ended up with raw ground beef in my slipper. And raw meat really grosses me out, so um, I'm just trying to press on and <laughs> get this recipe going um, and then wash my slippers. I'm going to be washing my slippers today. But uh, also in the background, my um, refrigerator has been growling at us lately, so we're going to be trying to fix that. Um, but let's get to the, to the recipe here. So I've got one pound of ground beef, and I'm just going to add in a good little scoop of minced garlic. My ground beef's just about done. It's going to be nice and sizzling for you guys. Hopefully this sounds okay. And we're just going to finish cooking the beef and then we're going to go get all of the veggies going in the slow cooker. I'm getting this started a little bit late. The recipe that I was looking at says eight hours on low. It doesn't say anything about options on high, but it's already 1220. I mean, we do eat dinner a little bit late, but I don't think we have to eat late tonight. Some nights it just kind of works out that way. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I'm sure it's gonna be fine if I have to bump it up to high a little bit. All right, I'm gonna take this off of the heat. All right, so I have cut up two st stalks of celery, one onion. I think I ended up doing four carrots, which is a little bit more than the recipe says, but I don't like our veggies in it. And then I'm just doing whatever little potatoes I have left. So I decided, I think I'm going to link two recipes. One is a slow cooker recipe and one is the recipe we normally use, but even the one I normally use, I alter. So I'm going to do some sort of combination um, because I know my husband really likes the other one and I don't want to like ruin this by switching it up to something that he's not a fan of or that I'm not a fan of. So anyways, I am um, chopping everything pretty small. I always do my onions and celery pretty small because um, that's the way I like them. Like I don't really like um, chunks of them and I only like them and they're really like al dente. Um, but I'm making sure to cut um, the carrots and potatoes pretty small because I am getting a little bit of a later start. So, I mean, the meat's gonna be cooked. So it's really just a matter of like making sure the veggies are cooked. Um, we will have to come back later and add some cheeses. I might end up doing a roux. I'm not totally sure. You'll you'll find out. I'm gonna just get this going and then look at my two recipes and decide exactly how I'm gonna do it. But I just need to get this stuff going. So let's finish chopping these up and then I'll show you what we're doing in the crock pot. All right, I have my slow cooker. I have greased it well. We're gonna add in all of our veggies. I'm thinking about adding corn but if I do, I will add it later. Um, when I do my cheeseburger soup, it usually turns into just kind of like, I don't know, a vegetable soup with beef. <laughs> but, um, okay, now we're gonna, let, what should we do next? I think I'm going to season this now. So I'm gonna do, I need a new salt shaker because the salt comes out horribly. Uh, slow. I'm going to add about a teaspoon of salt, teaspoon of garlic powder, which I probably didn't need to do because I added garlic in the beef, but that's okay. It's garlic. You can't go wrong. We're going to add about a teaspoon of parsley and a teaspoon of basil. Give this a good toss. All right, now we're gonna add in our ground beef and garlic. And then I'm gonna add in three cups of chicken broth. All right, we are going to just put this on low for the next few hours. It is almost one o'clock in the afternoon. So I will update you once I figure out where I'm going from here. All right, so hang on, Cam camera looks a little crooked. Um, it is now seven o'clock, so it's been about a little over six hours for me. Um, I'm thinking this is going to be good. I'm going to stick a fork in and check out the potatoes. 
and then we'll move on to like the cheeses and all the other stuff I'm gonna add. Um, but I was looking at, remember I said I was combining two recipes, I was looking at them both and realized that they're both slow cooker recipes. Uh, apparently I just never make the other one as a slow cooker recipe. So if you really wanna follow a recipe specifically, you could try either one of those. Um, one of the differences is they both use Velveeta cheese, which I do not use, but if you like that, go ahead and use that. Let's take a look at this. Um, I'm gonna be using a cheddar cheese, but I'm also gonna be mixing in a roux. So I'm kind of combining two different ones. Um, this, I'm guessing, is good. Oh yeah, potatoes are good. I'm sure carrots are, they're so tiny. So I am going to, I've had some cream cheese sitting out um, on the stove because I'm cooking bacon right now. So the stove top is warm. Um, you could also just use bacon bits, but I'm gonna use real bacon because I have it and I'm home to do such a thing. So I'm just using a half a block of cream cheese. The rest, the one recipe, I think one recipe calls for none and the other one, one calls for a whole block, but um, I'm gonna just do half, I think. So, I'm gonna kind of cube this up with that fork I was just using. Wow, I've only had this out for like not that long, but using the stove top to warm it up really does help. So, um, all right, so we've got that in there. I'm gonna let that, sorry, that was probably really loud on the camera. I'm gonna let that sit in there because it takes a little while for the cream cheese like softens, but it doesn't necessarily melt. Um, super, um, you gotta kind of work it in there. Actually, I said I was gonna, or what I was going to say was, sorry, my brain is ahead of my mouth, was that I was gonna just put the lid on this and let that melt that cream cheese up, but uh, just with putting a little pressure on it with the cream cheese, it's kind of melt blending in right. Putting a little pressure on it with a fork. Oh my word, guys. Uh, this is why voiceovers are better, because I can, um, redo it and make more sense. But when I'm talking while I'm doing stuff, I don't always make sense. Anyways, I'm just combining this cream cheese in here. Um, I'm gonna make a roux when it's a little bit closer to us eating. I think I'm gonna make a roux and melt in the cheddar cheese there, I think is what I'm gonna do. So this is still on low. Definitely does not need, at least for me, it does not need the, I think, I think the recipe called for seven hours, then another hour with the cheeses in it but I don't think that's gonna be necessary. So I'm gonna leave that on low, come back in maybe 20 to 30 minutes. We're gonna make a roux, we're gonna add in some bacon, and then I think we're gonna call it good. Broccoli would be really good in here too. Hang on. Okay, I realize when I keep talking, I might as well show my face. Although, whatever. Um, what was I even saying? I don't know what I was saying, and then the timer on my phone just went off, so that stopped the recording gonna pull the bacon out of the oven and let that just sit till I'm ready once we're closer to dinner. I don't remember what I was saying. I have no idea what I was saying. I don't think it was that important though. I'll be back in a minute. All right guys, well we're switching to voiceover because my husband was home and we were chatting at this point. I've got a half a stick of unsalted butter melted in a pan and I'm gonna add in about a total of a quarter cup of all-purpose flour and just whisking that in. Um, just do a little bit at a time and whisk it till it's all um, all in there. So what I was going to say before I forgot earlier, just a moment ago in the video, was that broccoli is also really good in this. So I did not add broccoli or corn, but I have done that in the past. So if you want to add extra veggies or bulk it up a little bit, that is a good option. So once the butter and flour is all combined, I'm going to slowly, kind of slowly, add in some milk. I'm using almond milk, and I'm using about a cup. You could probably do a cup to two cups. You can use regular milk if you want. Um, if you want, you could do like a little bit of heavy cream if you have that. I mean, I really feel like you can't go wrong. But I am doing it, trying to do it a little bit at a time, and whisking it, warming it up as you go. Like I don't want to, I don't want to put in too much cold stuff at once and wanting to make sure that the butter and flour like doesn't get clumpy. So that's really the most important thing to remember, but you know, do your recipe how you want. There's lots of room for, for flexibility here. And then I'm adding in um, almost a whole eight ounce block of cheddar, ch cheddar, shredded <laughs> cheddar cheese, um, and just 
mixing that in until it's melted. I had most of the block um, that I shredded up. So that's what I'm doing. And then once that is all in there and it's all melted, you could also just add the cheese straight to the to slow cooker, but I decided to do it in with the, that mixture and mix that until it was all melted. And then we're gonna add the whole thing into the slow cooker and let that just mix up and combine and warm up together. And then I'm also just taking several pieces of bacon and just kind of crumbling them up. I didn't even chop it, just kind of crumbled it up. But you could use the bacon bits if you want. Ham would also be good in here, but I went with the bacon kind of more along the lines of like a cheeseburger soup. Like I said, I usually get carried away and turn it into just like a creamy vegetable soup. So I was trying to stick to more like cheeseburger like things, but um, so much flexibility within the soup. Take the base like guidelines for it and put in whatever you want. And this was turned out incredibly good, very delicious. And you can't see all the bacon here once it's all plated up because I just mixed it all in, but it's in there and it was delicious. All right, so I switched over to voiceover for the end of the recipe just because uh, my husband was home and we were talking while I was cooking. But this came out really good. I hope you can follow along. Like I said, I'll have both recipes linked for you in the description box. Plus I tried my best to explain everything that I was doing and now I'm sitting next to my refrigerator and it's growling at me again. Um, yeah, so that's gonna do it. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. I like to share recipe videos along with some other stuff uh, sprinkled in, but I do a lot of cooking related content. So subscribe if you're into that kind of thing and have your notification bells turned on so you don't miss my future videos. And I'll see you next time. Bye guys.